a broader perspective on this now. Antonio Barroso is the deputy director of research for Teneo Intelligence. He spoke to us from London. First, how would you describe the situation in Spain now? What are we looking at here? So right now we are looking at a full-blown constitutional crisis. Um, you have essentially one part of the country, one region of the country, that decided to unilaterally uh, secede from it. And you have a strong reaction, uh, both politically and legal, from Spanish authorities to counter that action, uh, which has created an unprecedented um, constitutional crisis. And, and to be honest, I think it's also a unique crisis within the European context. What do you mean by unique? Well, in the sense that I don't know any previous cases in the last 50 years within the European Union of a region um, openly challenging the constitutional order um, and not using democratic means to uh, actually secede from, uh, from the state, right? Uh, so it's in those terms that I think this crisis should be considered unique in Europe. Mm. What's at stake for Spain here? Well, at stake is basically the, uh, uh, the, uh, the I wouldn't say, the, 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 that the settlement that was forged um, in the, in the, at the end of the 70s and in the 80s, uh, the constitutional settlement to basically create a modern democracy is at stake. Um, I think that the reaction of the Spanish state has been within the democratic um, realm, I would say. Uh, but at stake is essentially the fact that you have one region that contributes a significant portion of the GDP of the country uh, and one part of the, of the Spanish state that is very vibrant, vibrant culturally and economically uh, that essentially you put, uh, you jeopardize the relationships between that part of the country and the rest of the state. And I think that's, uh, that can only be negative for, for the future of Spain and actually for the image of Spain abroad as well. That, that image has been damaged, certainly, by the images of violence that we saw on, on the day of the referendum itself. There's certainly questions being raised today about the fact that these parliamentarians have been, have been put in jail, apparently because they're deemed to be a flight risk. What's the assessment in Europe of how the Spanish government has reacted? The assessment in Europe, uh, majoritarily, I would say every single uh, government of, of, uh, of the Europe, within the European Union, of the European Union member states, is supporting uh, Prime Minister of Spain, Manuel Rajoy, on this. Um, I think, you know, there's one crucial issue here to understand. Uh, the, the fact that Scotland was able to organize a referendum um, and that was pushing for basically for secession within a constitutional order and within the legal order of the United Kingdom, that has settled uh, a precedent for any other region that tries to do the same, right? So because of that, um, uh, and the fact that Catalonia has decided to go the unilateral way, most member states, uh, I would say not most, but all member states support uh, Mariano Rajoy's approach on this. Um, it's true that no, no member state or the European Commission like to see violence, and I think President of the European Council, Donald Tusk, has advocated for a, basically for, for dialogue and has advocated for avoiding violence. Uh, but most member states, as I said, support Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy on this. Are there implications in what's happened in Spain for the rest of those European countries, where there are examples, Scotland may have been one, but certainly even on the continent of Europe, there are countries where there are secessionist and nationalistic movements as well? Yes, yeah, so uh, we'll see those, those implications unfolding as we speak, because the fact that for Catalan First Minister, Carles Puigdemont, uh, uh, decided to go to Belgium in order not to be, uh, you know, uh, to avoid a potential arrest by Spanish authorities, has created somehow of a government crisis in Belgium, right? Uh, because the government in Belgium is composed by, uh, um, by na Flemish nationalists that eventually uh, also want to have the opportunity to secede from Belgium and, and, and unionist parties from, uh, from Wallonia. And this has created a crisis within the, the, the government. So that shows that uh, these kind of unilateral moves can create a lot of pressure um, on different movements in, pro in favor of secession that are happening uh, across Europe. Um, at the same time, I think that uh, the fact that uh, the, the Catalan parliament last Friday decided to unilaterally call for independence and then no single um, state, I would say in the world, decide to recognize them is, a, is basically um, an example for future regions that want to, uh, to, uh, to push for independence that through the unilateral path, no, no state will recognize you and you will actually undermine your objective of independence in the long term. I'm curious, in your view, though, would there have been a way for Catalonia to um, seek independence, if I can put it that way, uh, in, a, in what you describe as a constitutional or democratic fashion? Well, the problem, I think we'll say two uh, problems here. One is that the constitutional order in Spain and legal 
scholars debate about this, but uh, the consensus seems to be that the, you, know, you need to reform the constitution in order to allow a referendum to happen on, 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 on the secession of, of, of a region in the constitutional framework of Spain. Uh, and that's extremely complicated because you need to reinforce majorities. And that leads me to the second point, which is uh, the crisis kind of changed the politics of Spain, right? And uh, there was uh, little, it was the biggest economic crisis that the uh, country suffered for 50 years. It shook up politics with corruption cases emerging not only in Spain, but also in Catalonia. The emergence of new uh, uh, parties and establishments, some of them such as Podemos, centrist new parties such as Ciudadanos, and it created, it put the focus of politics in different issues, right, in terms of basically shaking up the national political system, and there was no consensus for a constitutional reform. So I think the Catalan's demand came at the worst possible moment. It was a moment of economic crisis, but also of political crisis. And that explains, in my view, why the country has uh, arrived to this situation that it's, it finds itself, it, uh, it find itself in uh, currently. What are you watching for now? What's the way forward here? Well, the way forward, I will look at two things. One, what happens with the uh, actions by judges in the, in the, in the coming days, um, because it's interesting in the sense that the interplay between uh, legal issues and political issues is going to be crucial uh, going forward. Um, the key issue here is that you have an election on the 21st of December, an election that has been called by Mariano Rajoy by imposing direct rule on Catalonia, and pro-independence parties are currently discussing whether they're going to run together or not. Um, I think the decision of the judges to uh, basically send to prison uh, a number of, uh, of key politicians of the pro-independence movement puts pressure on pro-independence parties to run together, but there are a lot of divisions uh, um, amongst them, and it's going to be a tough, uh, a tough thing for them to, to agree on. And this is crucial, because if they run together in a single list ahead of that 21st uh, of December election, that increases the chances that they will actually achieve an absolute majority of seats in the Catalan parliament, and they can continue pushing for their agenda. On the other hand, if they decide to run separately and they fail to obtain a majority, then the momentum for the, that separatist agenda will fade, and then I think the focus of politics in Catalonia will completely change. We'll go to more economic issues and other kinds of political issues. But I think uh, the momentum of independence will slowly fade, not fade away, it will mutate, but it will certainly be reduced in intensity. Mr. Barroso, thank you so much for your expertise on this. It was my pleasure.